Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. It is 5.30. Time to call the meeting to order. If you would, join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved. Second. Mr. Mearspaw? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Obviously, Mr. Gabbard is not here. He had some things come up that he had to take care of, so he will not be able to join us tonight. Uh, fiscal business. Linda, your report, please. Um, just wanted typical first month or first meeting of the month. Uh, the trustees have been given the appropriation. Uh, and, and revenue status reports as well as the fund status report. As we do every month, I want to read into the, the minutes the amount of money we have in our investment and checkings accounts, which are which is ten million seven hundred sixty one thousand seven hundred forty nine dollars and forty cents. Um, as I do every month, uh, the, the staff now has access to the, my software, so they can pull up these reports anytime they want. Okay. We have uh, the current bills to pay. We have had a chance to take a look at these. Linda, anything uh, additional on any There was a bills? lot this time, but I think it's the annual things. Everyone you know, was comp, Otarma. Uh, we had health insurance came through, so it seemed like everything hit. Three police cars were paid for. Everything hit at the same time. And unfortunately, our first half settlement is going to hit our bank account on April 20th. So we had to juggle a little bit, but they're all paid and everything's fine. Great. Anybody have any questions about the current bills? Hearing none, is our motion to pay the bills? So moved. Second. Mr. Mearspaw? Yeah. Mr. White? Yeah. Anything else under fiscal business? Yes, sir. Okay. We have a special item, a presentation by Commander John Burke and Lieutenant Steve Arsmith of Warren County Drug Task Force. Yes, sir. If you would give us your name. Good afternoon. Or... Yes, I'm John Burkey, Commander of the Warren County Drug Task Force. It's been a while, I haven't been here for a while, but it's good to be back. Nice to see you. I'm here for a couple reasons. One is to kind of give you a State of the Union in the last year. I'm also here to introduce my successor uh, at the end of this. So um, one of the things that um, we've been very busy and, and I just wanted to highlight a couple of the bigger things that we've been involved in. One was a bath salts case that um, it actually ended up, generally what we're always trying to do is go to the top of the food chain. And in this situation, we actually did. And this guy actually lives in uh, Portugal, believe it or not. So some of the buys that actually that were into our county, big time into our county, a big operation actually down in Mason, um, we were able to um, to buy from this guy after we had seized quite a bit from the guys here in, in uh, Mason Deerfield area. And apparently he's uh, wanted on several felonies and we're waiting for him to move into the right country where we can extradite him. So that was kind of a... Uh, a big success when you get to that final point oftentimes you don't make it there we also had the marlena park gang which was a thing we did with the fbi uh, involving wilmington we ended up with 72 arrests out of that uh, most of this was heroin and uh, uh, the cover purchases of heroin during the uh, course of probably about a year We're pretty close to that and uh our, we also started a brand new uh task force as part of our task force which is part of the ohio attorney general it's a combination with the uh, Homeland Security Department, the uh, Department of Homeland Security. And essentially what we do is this is a, an operation that's and it's been very successful that we go after the currency. I mean, as the drugs are sold in any area, someone typically from Mexico comes up here and collects those funds and then sends them back to Mexico, typically by motor vehicle, sometimes by parcel. So their job is to intercept that money. The drugs have already been... Uh, from these people been up and been sold, intercept that money before it goes back to Mexico. And the group we were involved in in the north, in the first year we seized uh, a little over $2.2 million. And this group has been in existence since August and we were almost to 400000 So uh, it makes a significant hit. That's one thing we found is that with the cartels that their money is actually a much, hurts them much more than the drugs. They can replace the drugs. 
but the money obviously is the end result and what they're looking for. So we've been very happy to be overseeing uh, that. Our prescription drug guy, uh, and he's actually retiring, Denny Lucan, um, the end of May is his last day, and I think we're very close to, uh, to a replacement for him. The young lady out of the sheriff's office who has uh, um, had a lot of interest in this, and I think will follow in his footsteps pretty well, so that's going on. One of the things that um, uh, we also have, and Lieutenant Aerosmith has been the one that's not only run it, but developed all the policies and procedures, and that's our meth unit. Uh, we actually had a, a uh, kind of a dump site meth lab that we came up here on uh, was it last week or week before, I think. And um, so we, we stay busy with those. Most of those are one pot, so they come in a two-liter pot bottle, and um, but, but very, uh, very dangerous, needless to say. And then we've also um, had, of course, heroin has been probably our biggest problem, and it is pretty much throughout the county. Between heroin and prescription drugs, but the, uh, the thing about the heroin in the last two or three years, our heroin overdose deaths have, uh, have spiked about 50% each year. Where in 2014, we ended up with 24 deaths for the whole year. In the month of January of 2015, we had seven alone. So hopefully that trend's not gonna continue. Obviously that would be a, a huge increase, but it certainly has, uh, has been a problem. I think probably on the, on the plus side, what we look at in the way of rehabilitation, because you know, we look at this as an enforcement and, and a uh, prevention, education, and a, and a rehabilitation problem. And that has been, Judge Peeler's actually had a program with a drug called Vivitrol, which happens to be a shot that you get for 30 days. And it's good for alcohol also. And actually, it's had a lot of success with it. The downside to it, if you haven't, don't know, is it's expensive. And there's a grant right now, but the shots are $800 to $1,200 <coughs> a piece for 30 days but you pretty much are assured that you're not going to be involved in drug activity during that time. So hopefully there's something on the horizon maybe that, that lasts longer, that costs less, because I think when you think about how much damage, collaborative damage, you know, someone addicted to heroin can do in 30 days, it's probably way over that amount. The other thing I wanted to thank was your chief. Your chief is a very active uh, member of our policy board. Uh, I think it's, uh, we were talking two or three years ago, we had I think every member of your agency was with us for 30 days uh, a piece, and I can't tell you how much uh, that uh, benefits both of us. It benefits us, obviously, to see the guys, and you have some great folks, as you know, and also they get to see what we do and what we need in the way of uh, you know drug tips and those kind of things. So I, I thank you for that opportunity. That was a great experience, and like I say, we got to meet some great people. So that all being said, my last day is October 23rd which will come sooner than later. And Lieutenant Aerosmith has been, he started with me, he'll tell you that it was him and I in a fax machine, that's how we started in October of 1999. And the fax machine was new, uh, and, and that was a, the best thing we had going, we wanted that off of a grant, all, actually. And since then, we have morphed into the Haida that we have today, and uh, 23 people and a bunch of different agencies so I just wanted to briefly introduce him. He is, uh, like I say, we've been together this entire time. So it's not like uh, he's unfamiliar uh, with the job. He certainly will step right in and, and it will be pretty much seamless. So I'm going to let him talk for a couple hours and do <laughs> <laughs> his part. Good evening. Nice to have you. Uh, just wanted to oh, I appreciate the major bringing me along with him to meet everybody. So you can, uh, some of you probably heard my name over the years because we have been stuck together for a long time. So. I even put a face with it, and I look forward to working with everybody. Um, our drug task force doesn't work without the support of um, all the townships and villages and uh, different jurisdictions in our county. So, like the boss said, uh, your chief is very active on our board, very supportive of what we do. Um, the major and I have been together since 99. Like you said, I've been with the sheriff's office for 23 years, um, and we did start with that one fax machine, so it's, it's come a long way. Um, what the operation is today. So um, look forward to working with each one of you and um, reach out to us if you need us. And, uh, your officers know how to get a hold of us. That, that uh, has improved a lot with that program that the chief kicked in. Now we get a lot of calls from your guys uh, out there on the street that will call us direct and uh, they've been able to put some faces with names and um, have really helped us with you know, taking a traffic stop and maybe letting us go a little further than a traffic stop. So that was a great great program um, that the chief kicked off. But thank you all very much and look forward to working with you.
Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I should ask you if you have any questions. Uh, I don't have any questions. Thank you for your service. And, uh, and My pleasure. It's been, been a, it's been a pleasure and an honor, believe me, to be in one county and operate here. It's some great folks. Great place to live, as you guys already know. I've Steve, got some big good, shoes good to fill. Mm -hmm. You do. Sure. Thanks. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we also have a presentation by Charles Schaefer, the Vice President of Springboard Historical Society. Uh, historically, historical on the historical significance of Har Harbaugh Park. If you would, Mr. Schaefer, nice to see you. I'm Charles Schaefer, and uh, just for your agenda, it's replace the E with the F. So it's two Fs, S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R. <clears throat> So I'm Charles Schaefer, right in the That's exactly <laughs> that. and I am a Clear Creek uh, Township resident, a resident, and I'm the vice president of the Springboro Area Historical Society. I live in a uh, circa 1840 farmhouse and very interested in history, and that's probably why I'm. Uh, I actually found out that you know we uh, we joined and we said, hey, we're going to be life members, you know. So we went ahead and joined as life members, you know. We didn't realize they hadn't been together for a few years, you know. But uh, we were really interested in history and uh, have a lot of antiques and stuff. So um, I come before you today because uh, I represent the Historical Society. Um, and I like to talk about the Harbaugh Farm over on Spring Grove Road. Uh, it's my understanding that the township has purchased the property. And I'm not sure what the township has planned for the property at this point in time. Well, what I would like to do is convey to the trustees um, that the property may hold a potential historic significance in the township and the community. Um, over the past 30 years, the Harbaugh family has brought to the society many artifacts that they found on the farm. And um, they brought them into the historical society and we've got, you know, everything from axe heads to arrowheads to all sorts of, um, of artifacts that they picked up. And we've, you know, some of these um, artifacts have been dated back to Fort Ancient, Hopewell, and Paleo Indian period. And the Paleo Indian period goes back to over 6,000 years old. So this is way before Aaron Wright, you know, uh, founded the uh, area of Springboro, the, the city of Springboro. So um, we've been told that portions of the Harbaugh farm is located between two water courses, and which which we've been told is that it is a potential for a village. We don't know this, but um, it, it could be something similar to the Sunwatch Village. Uh, but we don't know. And um, we have talked with Sunwatch, uh, some of the people over there. And um, uh, based on what we know, you know, I think everybody pretty well agrees that Indians were here many, many years ago. They did occupy. Clear Creek Township, and uh, a potential village site is not so far-fetched, you know, that there's a possibility. But, you know, the big thing is, 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 um, is you know, so we go, we, we go as good stewards, and uh, we look at preserver, preserving the past for the future. And um, most important, one cannot protect something if you don't know about it. And it's one of those situations like they did at uh, Sunwatch. Sunwatch wasn't that long ago. I mean, I, you know, I remember when they, they basically found out about it. Uh, so it's not that far-fetched. It's, you know, there's a potential there. Don't know. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, ring the bells and, you know, there's, there's something. But there might be a significance there. And our concerns may be nothing or it might be something. Uh, but what we would like is uh, what the society asks of the trustees is to make sure that, you know, in the development of the park, if there is a development of the park, is to do due diligence. And that would be, you know, uh, when the property is developed, work with archaeologists or, and experts to verify any ex existence of any significant historic site, you know, or, or you know, I think uh, I talked to Mr. Wade, and he's found lots of arrowheads on his farm. You know, maybe it's nothing. Maybe maybe we find nothing out there. But you know, it'd be a shame 
that the community would lose something that if it is something of a of a sun watch or or something you know you get the uh, Fort Ancient Indians aren't so far away uh, and there has been some documentation uh, in some of the um, the records of, of, of uh, Warren County and Clear Creek Township of finding burial burial grounds and uh, some other um, significant you know things and so what we like is you know if, if it does pan out if there is some significant you know historic site there is that it's it's checked into before the earth is moved let me let me ask the question is the historical society of mine to uh, do something like that now uh, you know someday maybe that park will be developed it's not on the immediate schedule but wouldn't we want to do something right now maybe even uh, to have have it uh, and I don't know how you do that I'm uh, new to this picture myself okay. so uh, you know I have been checking around and which was kind of really interesting is as I was going through and checking out some archaeological societies and what they do and what's kind of interesting is is that up in Greenville that they have actually just within months ago have have uncovered one of the the areas that's part of the fort and what happens is, you know, they didn't really uncover it until recently. I'm, I'm talking like January of 2015, and now there's been interest, you know, into doing something with it. When properties are under private ownership, you know, you really don't. It's called trespassing when you're when you're walking through other people's yards and stuff, and you really shouldn't do that, you know. But when it becomes, you know, public property, you know, there's there's not, you know, there's a little bit of opportunity there, uh, but I don't. I'm a I'm a neophyte at this. Okay. Um, and and when I think back to the years when they did find Sun Watch, you know, the farmer says, you know, I kept plowing up these you know arrowheads and pieces of pottery and stuff like that. And I don't know what all. I, I just know what the Harbaugh's have brought to the okay. to the museum. And there's there's some really cool stuff they brought over. I can't imagine that we would be opposed to having someone go in and, and check it out. I don't know if they can X-ray the ground. They they do have a thing called ground penetrating radar hmm. that that I've learned that they can do to, to you know to look for like um, where maybe uh, foundations or poles are in the ground. So you know you might want to do some research. Uh, this is a suggestion to find out if there's funding available through any of the archaeological societies. I, I don't know that uh, we want to go spend a bunch of public money on doing that, but if there's private funds available, I would think we'd be glad if you went in and looked around. Yeah. I don't think. That, I think I think there could be like a partnership because, because there's I think no reason we wouldn't want to have them right. look around. Right. Doesn't Jeff Ryder from the from Fort Agent, that doesn't isn't that part of their I don't know thing with the because they were the state it's a state park so I think that's kind of an outreach program that they do at Fort Agent. Well, and there's also, um, we've been checking in to some of the local universities, like Wright State, you know, if they have an archaeological, uh, you know, department that maybe they would, you know, have, you know, sure. students look into that. Um, you know, we are, we're not just kind of saying, here you go, here's a big ticket dollar, you know, uh, item there and that, uh, you know, you're at, no, that, you know, but we would like to, you know, work with you to see, you know, if there's, if we can bring in some universities. The Museum and kind of, of Natural History in Dayton and Cincinnati both all have those, internships yeah. with college students for that. Yeah, uh, do, do some research and get back to us. But, uh, okay. We'll let you guys take the lead on that. The most, you know, most important is, is we want to, you know, you can't protect something if you don't know about it. Right. That's true. Understood. Uh, and, and again, you know, I don't know that we're going to see any huge activity there in 2015 or 16. We haven't we haven't got to that point, but sometime in the not too distant future, we'll make some kind of decision on that. So, I, I think probably your timing is pretty good. Well, thank you for having me. Okay, thanks for coming. Thanks for the information. Thank you. Okay, anything else under special activities, Jack? No, sir. Okay. Anything under unfinished okay. business? Okay, under new business administration, we have 4682, a resolution determining the standard measurement period for the, uh, the 
Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act. Uh, like this, explain this, to us? this resolution is more of a housekeeping item. Um, I know we have done this in the past, at least where I was before, and talking to folks, we didn't have anything that declared a period of time where we look back at the hours of a person, basically part-time or seasonal. The, the Obamacare Patient Protection Affordable Care Act requires you to provide insurance similar to what you do a full-time person if somebody's hours are over 30 in average for the last look back period which you declare what that is the caveat to the look back period is if you if you're someone averages more than 30 hours over that three months six months nine months 12 months whatever it is they get insurance for that three months six months nine months 12 months so 12 months is I think the longest you can look back and works with the way our people do business. Our part-timers are here on a permanent basis, so it's ongoing. It's really about the seasonal, so 12 months equalizes them to where it will not be an issue. So the, the housekeeping item just to make sure we have this declared and in place. Okay. <clears throat> There's a motion to approve 4682. So moved. Second. Roll Is, call, please. Roll Mr. you're fine. Mr. Mearspaugh? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Okay, motion for uh, resolution 4683, a resolution establishing no parking area on Silver Lake Drive. This is an, a, an ongoing, I guess, parking request that had been out there. I know it was something Dennis had handed off to me on Silver Lake Drive right off of 73. Um, the throat of that entrance is a little narrow when folks park in that stretch it's hard to get in and out and Dennis had offered them some ability to restrict parking. Uh, when the snow cleared the chief and Ron and I went out there to look at it and uh, Scott Smith came eventually and yes when people are parked on both sides they're going to have difficulty getting in and out. Restricting the parking back roughly three to four hundred feet with a couple no parking signs does the trick. Functionally, there needs to be something in place from the trustees to enforce and uh, enable the no parking. There's a few other hoops with some notices and, and it's put in the uh, paper of general circulation to affect and make the no parking stick. So that's what this issue is or this resolution is for. Okay. Anybody have any questions of Jack about 4683? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve 4683? So moved. Second. Mr. Mearspaw? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. And we have 4684, resolution of intent to dispose of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit personal property, including motor vehicles by internet auction. Again, so house, housekeeping, this is what's been done the last few years. We have an agreement that's already been authorized to continue. This happens every year just on your behalf to declare we're going to do that for 2015. Okay, so a motion to approve 4684. So moved. Second. Mr. Mearspaw? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. And we have a purchase recommendation for the Ohio Bureau of Workers, Workers Comp Third Party Administrator for Care Workers. Again, this is our annual third-party administrator for our workman's comp. Uh, uh, Frank Cates is who we have always been with. They're endorsed by the Ohio Township Association. Frank Cates is now merged with uh, Care Workers Comp, and this is the annual fee. Okay. If I have, have any questions about this uh, request to renew this agreement? I, I would add the... Um, Workers' Comp has the Frank Gates authorized as their agent to work with the township. So we get a discount and have to go through this TPA to get that BWC discount for townships. So this is our best option for the best rates. Thank you. Okay, is there a motion to approve this uh, contract? 
so moved. Second. Mr. Earspaw? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Anything else under administration and business? Okay. Under police district, we have resolution 4685, a resolution of intent to dispose of unclaimed or forfeited property, including seized firearms and obsolete police department shotguns. Yes, sir. Several meetings back, the board authorized us to replace our shotguns that, that we currently use. And, uh, we had a total expense of $10,858.40 on that expense. Uh, after Mr. Nearspot, I believe you asked about the old shotguns we're going to be loading. So I did a little research on that to see what that, in the past we traded uh, the police guns in. Uh, I wanted to take that one step further. We got 33 uh, weapons that have been ordered seized by the court uh, that we've had for quite some time. The past, we cut those up and destroyed them. The, the, the Ohio Revised Code gives us several uh, avenues to get rid of them. We can give them to BCI, destroy them, we can destroy them, or we can sell them to a licensed dealer. And I had Keeslers come in, and, and they're the, the group that's supplying our shotguns to us. Uh, and they gave us a bid on the weapons that uh, we have in hand that they would pay for those if we uh, did that. So I needed some legislation to clear the hurdle to say that. Uh, in the past, those were given as uh, to be used by the police department in some fashion. Uh, I don't see any need uh, for what's still left there of those 33 guns. Um, so we need some legislation to clear that out and allow us to pursue to go ahead and uh, follow the ORC and, and uh, try to sell those to Keyslers uh, under uh, what the law allows. So that's what I'm asking for is that you just bless that uh, we can proceed with that legislation. I can uh, keep talking to Keesler's about that. What they've offered total is $5,200 uh, back toward the purchase of our guns. Uh, so that would bring that cost down about uh, $5,658.40. So uh, the, if we could do it, it would save us some money on the purchase of our new shotguns. Is that are cut them off? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so that they would go to Keesler's uh, in, a, in a gun transfer, and then they would obviously do any checks on their end once it comes in their possession for resale. So these 33 that are listed here, those are the ones that we've obtained through the courts or whatever? Correct. And then the ones on the back that looks like there's several here in the hundreds. It should be about 10 serial numbers of the shotguns. Yeah, 10 yeah. for shotguns. Great. Good deal. So just a way to try to save some money. Okay. okay. Is there a motion to approve 4685? So moved. Second. Okay. Mr. Rearscoff? Yay. Mr. Wade? Yay. Okay. Uh, we also have the monthly report from the police department. Uh, Polar Plunge, uh, uh, Sergeant Cornette is always involved in uh, Special Olympics, and we support that fact that uh, that was held. It was a uh, semi-pretty day, uh, but the water was cold, so he says. So they say. I didn't bother doing that. But uh, I think the last number I heard is they had. Uh, raised about $35,000 in the groups that showed up there to do the public ones that day. So kudos to them for uh, their work in that. Uh, other than that, uh, the uh, commander referenced uh, a meth uh, pack that we had. Uh, it's actually this month, but uh, it's kind of significant. Uh, uh, beside the road on 741, a backpack was found, and it was a miniature meth lab. Uh, unfortunately, one of our citizens thought maybe somebody had dropped it off the roof of their car and picked it up and drove it to work, not realizing the chemicals that might be in there might be explosive. Uh, so we were able to get that and call in the task force. Uh, There's a way they can make that in order now. It doesn't cost a lot of money. It used to cost a fortune to dispose of that. And uh, they assisted us in that. So just a reminder of people, be cautious of what they pick up and find a side of the road. Uh, pretty dangerous situation for that. Anything in that they could backtrack into any... No, no. Yeah. Sometimes they leave her driver's license. Or, uh, yeah. Uh, they leave I've had that backpack. where everybody in the, in the car <laughs> had their driver's license in their bag of marijuana. So they knew whose, dri whose marijuana it was. That made it very easy to backtrack that. We didn't get that lucky. lucky. But, uh, uh, other than that, uh, we recently had a 17-year-old doing a uh, hill jumping on Turf Road. Pretty bad accident. Uh, so we hope he's going to be okay and then over the weekend. Uh, Injured pretty severely at the rodeo. Um, yeah. He had to stop. So our uh, thoughts go out to those families. So hopefully they're going to be okay. Uh, other than that, any other questions you have about monthly? Have you want to have to talk about? I don't know. Do you have anything? Um, let's see. Did, did you have some 
information on safety down staffing? Uh, yes, I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Yes. Go right ahead. Okay. Um, we went back and sat down and talked about this and realized that there are some new faces uh, from the, the, the beginning of the thoughts of doing Safety Town. Mr. Cameron, uh, Mr. Municipal, and Mr. Gabbard are pretty new to that. And, and uh, so you got here probably about the time we first started talking about it. I think it was 07, I think you were in 08. So, um, but I wanted to kind of maybe just back up a minute and give you all an idea of what we're up to and, and uh, take some mystery out of it or or, or at least give you some good, good information that you can make decisions on and understand what's going on. So uh, the Safety Town program we've been building for a while, there, there are two components to that. Once we start the classroom sessions, there, there are two components. One of those components is the actual classroom. Uh, we've got um, some weeks set aside to educate some of the kids in that. There'll be two sessions a day that graduate every Friday uh, for as many classes we fill up, uh, two hours at a time. They'll do some classroom work where they'll be educated on uh, some videotapes and, and some other things that they'll engage Second in. Second graders, third graders. We're, yeah, we're, we were going to look at uh, kindergarten going to first, but uh, uh, five points changed to a second grade status uh, this year, so we're going to look at first going to second. And I, I'm not so, uh, uh, a lot of places look at kindergarten or first grade starting safety town. I'm not so torn about that in the sense that uh, I don't mind having a little older uh, child there because the social media stuff is just getting so uh, horrendous and ridiculous. And at least we've had our, our share of it here. I, I, there was a guy just indicted in a big ring in Carlisle uh, sharing uh, children and getting on there and sharing children, uh, pictures that he would uh, solicit them to post. Uh, so it, I think we're gonna, we're gonna incorporate some, um, uh, some social media stuff into that. That's probably a good age group to look at. So I'm not too worried with the fact it's a little bit older just from that standpoint, uh, being able to to try to educate them and to not get in involved in that stuff. So uh, and that's the school that's in our jurisdiction, so we look to keep it there and uh, go from there. So so we'll have the classroom section of that, and once they complete that, and I know I've been buying things through the years, and probably you're wondering, you see it at National Night Out, there's the actual uh, practical exercise of that. And I'm not a teacher, I'm, I'm the black sheep, I'm the only policeman, my whole family's teachers. Uh, but I always got taught best when I got to learn something and then practice that. And Safety Town kind of has that same premise. You go to the classroom part of that, and then you go to the map that we purchased in the village and the cars, and you practice what those things that you were taught at. So just to give you an idea of this, the separation of that and why we're, what some of that stuff means and why we're doing it. Uh, you know, we didn't invent it. There are 2012 or 4,000 agencies conducting safety towns around the United States and in other countries. Um, so. I got here in 07. Um, it kind of started before Chief Piper started uh, the National Night Out at Patricia Allen Park from 04 to 07. He had that. And there was a safety town component in that. Uh, they borrowed that equipment from the city of Levin. We didn't own anything to do that with. And uh, that was running when I got here in 07. I came in July and safety t uh, the uh, National Night Out was right after that. So I got some exposure to it when I first got here. Um, you know, when I came in as chief, the administration said, we want some things from you. Um, it was good Kalia to professionalize the police department, continue national night out on the same level that it's at now and, and try to grow that. Uh, we don't want to be a speed trap, uh, and that was my philosophy too, and, and I've heard that from the board before. Uh, and uh, the administrator said, touch as many decisions as we could in some community policing way, uh, and tr give them something to show the police department's doing something for them. So uh, I talked to him at the time and said, look, I'd like to progress this at some point in time into an actual classroom setting uh, if we could. Uh, we're part of the way there. We've been uh, kind of displaying that at National Night Out and getting a feel for it and test driving it. So, and he encouraged that. So uh, here's a timeline. Uh, 04 to the present, kind of where we've been at, uh, back and forth. Um, and I'm not going to bore you with the whole timeline, but I wanted to kind of hit some, uh, some takeaway points from it. Uh, like I said, from 2004 to 2013, everything we did with uh, the safety town aspect component of our National Night Out was using borrowed equipment. Uh, from 2004 to 2012, it was a 50-50 chance whether or not we got it. So some years we had safety town uh, components there, some years we didn't, because we didn't own any of the, the equipment to do that with. Uh, oh, 2011, uh, there was 
There was, and one of the things I, I thought was really cool that Chief Parker did was you had National Night Out, which is the uh, nationwide uh, come out and meet and greet the police officers. But they also incorporated an educational program in National Night Out. So there were safety stations around National Night Out. And the kids got to go, if they visited all those safety stations and participated in it, they got a gift at the end or a prize at the end. So it started some educational components of that back then. Um, in 2011, we lost the uh, seatbelt uh, train uh, and had to build our own. Uh, so we kind of started at that point looking at the fact that we can't get commitment on equipment, so we're going to start coming up with ways to, to uh, one, keep that as a component of the National Night Out, and again, try to look at the, the possibility of uh, moving that into that classroom setting. So 2013, we started looking at buying some of those things, and we tapped into the Loeb Foundation for some of those costs. Um, in 2013, we bought our first, we started buying some of our stuff. We didn't start off with the Taj Mahal. We used duct tape, and we went over to the park, since we no longer had the mat to use from Lebanon, and we duct taped the streets on the ground and, and built buildings and put them up and bought some, a few cars to uh, try to work that with. And what we'd watch, and, and I would talk to the, the, the people about, you know, if we turn this into a program, do you have interest in this? And it was always yes. And again, that area was always one of the busiest areas of National Mine Out. So it seemed to be uh, something that they were gravitating to. So continued using that, 2013, 2014. Uh, uh, again, we used uh, National Mine Out. We used uh, some low fund to uh, purchase some additional equipment. Um, in 2014, after National Line Out was over with, uh, I met with um, uh, Mr. Petrie at the Springville Schools. He called and said that uh, a lady named Ms. Drayton had uh, called and wanted to talk about a, a, a policing idea that her and I, I think some people had uh, about policing schools. And uh, Mr. Drayton's here, her husband, uh, they moved into the township recently. And uh, they asked that we. Uh, there's some things I just didn't think we could do. They wanted us to put an office in the school systems and, and put police officers on the computers and let them come there during the day and spend some time doing reports. And we operate out of the county's computer system, so it made it very difficult to make that work. And, and I'd rather have them walking uh, through the hallways occasionally rather than sitting in an office uh, anyways. So uh, I declined some of those ideas that she had, uh, but uh, she specifically asked about uh, that we would do a safety tent program. And I told them we were actually looking at that and uh, had, uh, we're getting close to the end of, of trying to put that together. Uh, so uh, after she left, uh, Mr. Petrie and I had some additional meetings uh, where we talked about what the school could do to assist us and if we put that program on. I met with uh, Chief Krytal from Spring Grove about uh, their police department helping. And we started building a consensus to uh, try to come up with a program and do it as, as cost effectively as possible uh, and involve uh, those that had some skin in the game to get in and help out. So uh, that came to fruition and uh, like, uh, right after the, uh, the uh, National Night Out last year, uh, there were some people committed to being involved in that. In the meantime, the Rotary, as you know, came forward and said, uh, we heard about this uh, in Spring World, we want to donate some money, and the board's accepted that money and stuff. So people started getting interested and we made a commitment to, to, to move toward that. Uh, Mr. Municipal, you asked about the cost. We uh, initially scheduled this for seven weeks. Uh, that should cover maybe half of those eligible. Uh, and I, when I say eligible, we have various school systems that are affected between the first and second grade. I didn't want to limit this strictly to just second graders in the Spring Rural School System because we have Waynesville and, and Centerville and, and uh, Lebanon involved. So we looked at it from, uh, if we're going to do it, we wanted to do it uh, available to any second grader entering into a second grade that lived within our jurisdiction. Uh, so that we, everybody that uh, uh, could have a possibility to get a lot for it. So uh, if we do the full seven weeks, I, I don't know that, you know, we're going to book that. We're going to try to crunch those numbers as they come in and not create a class of two or three. Uh, we're looking for classes of about 20 in size uh, for them to uh, teach effectively. Uh, so we're going to look and see the first year, try to get some momentum. I don't, I don't know if we'll fill up the full seven weeks or not. I know the first day we already got about a dozen applications and quite a few emails have come in uh, praising the thought and, and, and so forth of, uh, yes, where's this been and, and stuff like that. Got a beautiful letter today from, from uh, Lisa Babb about uh, uh, her son coming into it and wanting to support it and so forth. So uh, if we do have to completely do the seven weeks, that'll create 48 slots that I would have to backfill with part-time officers. Uh, 
if I backfill those officers, uh, we're looking at about $9,500 if it goes to complete seven weeks. Uh, that would cost me a labor cost uh, at the rate of our part-time officers. Um, several years back, and I, I, some of you have been part of that, have not been part of that, we applied for some safe routes to school funds uh, to do some infrastructure stuff in front of Five Points because of the, the intersection and the side, no sidewalks and all that kind of stuff. And, and as with the government always, they, they give up money, they take up money away. So they took the infrastructure money away. However, there was dangling out there uh, some money for um, uh, some other projects at that school involving uh, safety. Uh, we applied for a $5,000 grant. Uh, they forgot to give us the money. And they did notify us the other day that the $5,000 uh, is available. Uh, we believe that we can take that $5,000 and we're working with ODOT now. Uh, it was originally slated for some uh, uh, bicycle rodeos uh, to pay the officer's cost to do that. This will have some of that component in it. I think we're going to be able to move that money uh, to offset some of the cost, uh, of the labor cost that we would have on doing safety count and apply to that. Uh, so I hope that's going to happen. Um, over the weekend, we had some additional sponsors come forward. Uh, Sandy's Towing uh, wants to donate some money uh, toward the project. Uh, Simpkins Foley wants to donate some money toward uh, outfitting the children with t-shirts uh, as a, a gift uh, to give them at the uh, graduation of the week and stuff. Uh, surprisingly, the uh, LCI prisoners have given a verbal, uh, they, they do donate money and they are part of uh, Special Olympics. Uh, they have uh, given a verbal that they would like to donate some money uh, through uh, the organization over there. And I believe the Warren County Drug Task Force wants to donate some money, so we've had some verbal calls of, uh, through the weekend about some of those things. So um, that's what I got. That's kind of, if you've got any questions, I'll be more than happy to try to answer them for you. When, when, is, when is the program slated? It uh, begins in July and will run through June. I'm sorry, June and July. It begins in June and will run through June and July. And so the answer to some of your things, whether you can use the $5,000, you'll know that sometime in the near future. Yes, and, and, and if we if they allow that, and, and they verbally told us we can, uh, I just don't have it in hand yet, uh, we would be able to, to get that back to, to uh, pay back for uh, the expenses we put out on uh, light. Thank you for doing this chart. I didn't, I didn't know about that. Um, and I don't think Mr. Petrie actually arraigned anything. I did anything get arraigned. I'm sorry. Right. Yeah, you got Mr. Petrie was arraigned. I, oh, okay. I couldn't yeah. help but think that was funny. Um, there goes but, my spell chart. Yeah. Yeah. No, you spelled it correctly. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I just put the wrong word. <laughs> uh, Springboard Police Department's on here several times. Are they kicking in? Or what, what's their? Gonna, I don't remember they were involved. Yeah, they're going to provide one of their officers, as, uh, along with our two officers, to help teach the classes. Are uh, they Are they helping with any of the cost on any of this? Uh, Chief Kreitoff is not ponying up any money yet, but I'm not too bashful about asking. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm just wondering if this at some point will ever go to North Park, for example. And at that point, you know, I would think Springfield Police would want to kick in to help. Well, we're going we're, we're to want to keep it at the school so we can do it rain or shine. Uh, the school is going to give us the facility uh, through this period of time to use with no cost. Uh, we can set it up inside either the gymnasium or the cafeteria uh, area, uh, operate rain or shine so we don't miss any days. And then uh, in that, they're also going to provide a school bus. One of the days that uh, part of the safety aspect is they'll take a trip to the fire station. Um, there's some components of fire safety we're going to get into when you, know, when you have smoke in a house and a fire in a house, kids will run and hide. Uh, and then the mean firemen come in with all their masks and helmets and turn out gear and you know, it's quite as free as Bob and his dress blues. Uh, but they, they get scared of that. So the, the, the one of the components is to show them uh, this is what to expect when it happens. Uh, they're going to give us the use of the bus and the bus driver and fund that. Uh, and we'll also incorporate some bus safety. So we're trying to hit every cylinder we can as we're moving uh, whatever. I, mean, I assume this is also going to be a national night out. The, the, yeah, we'll, we'll continue uh, displaying and, and letting them use the safety village aspect of it. Uh, it's not cool. Certainly, we don't get education time there as well, uh, classroom time with them. Uh, but, but yeah, we certainly want to encourage to keep that there and then encourage them to show up to school next year. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Chief, do you, can I 
Do you want to talk about what this looks like moving forward into next year and, and what your plans are as this? You know, first year out of the box, I'm sure there'll be some growing pains, some adjustments to make. We'll look at. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't imagine we would ever have a, a, a point where we could address every kid. Uh, and most of the safety towns you look at are first come, first serve, just for that reason. Uh, so uh, we'd like to keep it uh, uh, within reason, keep it within some budget, uh, uh, still touch as many as we can with it. Uh, I, I don't. Uh, foresee any other huge expenditures coming. We may break a wheel or we may whatever on something at any point in time with the use of those. Uh, hopefully we won't have any traffic accidents on that, but uh, you may, may break something somewhere. Uh, so there may be some residual costs there, but I think you're probably kind of looking at what our template's going to be for the future. Um, so. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for the Chief about this? Any other questions? Okay. Uh, moving on to item three, we have some purchase recommendations. Police vehicles outfitting costs for service. Chief, you want to talk about these? Yeah, our, our three police cars have come in. They're out back. I think they're, I don't want to maybe off the strike now, but we uh, need to outfit them. Uh, CDW, uh, we need to buy a tough book, tough book computer for one of the cars. Um, I need to purchase that at 45, 43, 24 from CBW. Uh, we need a, an in-car camera for one of the cars. Uh, that's $5,400 from Perry Protec. I'd ask the board to allow me to make that expenditure. Uh, Park Public Safety is uh, priced our upfit. Uh, the only other bid we got was from Statewide. Uh, statewide was $5,000 more. Uh, so I would ask that we go with Par. Uh, their three up uh, charges are 34,345, 23. Uh, we peeled some money. We, we, we started looking at the cars last year, so there was some peeled money from uh, Mr. Pickett and placed uh, some extra money in, in the car fund last year for cars and, and outfitting. Uh, I held that money uh, for the outfitting part, and uh, the board authorized uh, expenditures this year uh, in uh, my uh, uh, the police department's. Uh, Fund, so I'd like to uh, take 18473 from the PO, 158470 from uh, this year's funds, and uh, pay for all those costs. So that 15 and 18 that we want to add up to this? Uh, I hope it does. I hope it might happen. It's not as good as my spell. If you're talking about uh, 45, 54, 34. That's a little bit more than 15 and 18. Well, the 9,943.24 coming from the computer and the in car camera. Okay. Uh, makes up all the time. Okay. Uh, anybody have any questions about these three expenditures? Uh, if, but, if I think there a motion then to approve these three expenditures. So moved. Second. Mr. Peters, Paul? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Anything else from the police district at this time? I don't think so. Fire district, we have a purchase recommendation for Warren County uh, Telecom annual maintenance fee. Renewal of fee or is it? It's a renewal of a fee. It's actually $120 less per unit than what they originally quoted us when this was approved back in 2011. We'll pay this annually. It maintains all the software and what the county does for our electronic patient care report. Okay, so a motion to approve this uh, telecom annual maintenance fee. So moved. Uh, second. Mr. Peters, Paul? Yeah. Mr. Way? Yeah. And we have a resignation recommendation uh, to accept a resignation for firefighter paramedic Thompson. Uh, this one just kind of came out of the blue for us. Okay. So he's going to move on to other things. All right. So a motion to, to accept this resignation. So moved. Second. Mr. Mears, Paul? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. And your monthly report? Uh, the only thing I really want to point out, not necessarily on there, is the uh, Jackamar Court is yeah. finished. Okay. Uh, they were seceded in the last week. Uh, the foundation is taken out. Uh, air quality came back zero levels throughout, which is great. 
Uh, they'll be also uh, conducting some uh, water samples periodically to make sure there was no runoff to be concerned about. Um, all the residents in that immediate area were very pleased with the outcome of it. Uh, it was great coordination between all the agencies that were involved with it. Uh, final cost ended up being over 200000 that came from the Superfund site for cleanup. Okay. Hopefully we don't have any other odd situations like that. One in a career is enough. <laughs> okay. Uh, monthly, anything else on your monthly report you want to point out? Yes, sir. Any questions uh, for the chief of his monthly report? We're moving on to the zoning department. Yes, sir. It's time for zoning commissioner appointment time. So we have one slot open and one person um, who is currently the alternate request to be reappointed that. If that is your desire, I need to have a motion as that one moment. So a motion to uh, appoint Tom Spence as the alternate member. So moved. Second. Mr. Meterspaw? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. And then we have resolution. 4686, a resolution determining that the maintenance of a specific track of land constitutes a nuisance. Yeah, just to give you an update, um, this has been abated, so I'll ask for you to withdraw the resolution, but I was amazed. I hoped that we would bring the individual here and have further discussion, but they went ahead and did, um, the, so to speak, shoring up the building as best that I can tell, um, locking things up and patching the holes. So we'll see what um, residents think who are in the area who are complaining about the issue. But at this point in time, I'd like to put that on hold. It may come back, but yeah. we're making some good progress. That's great. So you'd like a motion to withdraw 4686? Yes, please. So motion that effect. So um, second. Mr. Meters, Paul? Yeah. Mr. Wade? Yeah. Good. Uh, monthly report? Yeah, I can answer questions about the monthly. As you can see we're up in dwelling, so I make somebody happy. <laughs> Swimming pools are also the, the fun thing that we go in on. So, I'll just give an update. Um, the James Hall Jr. property, which everyone is aware of, I'm sure, at 5375 South State Route 741, it is a site visit. It's still caught in the court system. And we have another installment on Friday, in which, if successful with that system, because it's between the trustee and the previous trustee of the property. So James Hall Jr. versus the new appointed trustee. We're trying to get some cleanup done in anticipation of that Friday, show some good effort. If they're successful with their court case, then they will be doing an auction of the site. But it's been a long time coming, so we'll see it when it comes. But that's just some status report on that issue. So you guys have Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I can't it's a it's a regular topic. I, I'm sure that it is. It has been for decades. <laughs> so, decades. unfortunately. Actually, probably has been over a decade. Yeah, well, Mr. Pickett started that uh, process back in the 80s. So. Um, 